Hi, I'm Philip Smith. I'm with the West Virginia Department of Agriculture. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about the integrated pest management rules for schools and child care centers in West Virginia. These rules uh, are relevant to all schools and all child care centers, public and private. The essential skeleton of our rules is that uh, we want to minimize the use of pesticides um, use pesticides only in response to documented pest populations that meet action thresholds uh, set by the school or child care and also to provide um, some guidance on the type of documentation that must be kept at the school or child care uh, both for liability purposes, safety purposes, um, also for uh, just general information to the public and the parents and employees of the school. The uh, information that's kept at the school um, is required to be kept in the school's office. Um, and if this is at a child care, the, this information would be kept at the, at the office of the child care. And that is on the actual physical site, not at a central office, not located at, at a um, headquarters for a Head Start program that's located three cities away. It's all this information is to be kept in the file at the school or child care. And we'll talk about some of the specific things that have to be in that file as we go through this uh, short video. The rules themselves were, were uh, passed in 1996 and they've gone through a few small uh, revisions since then. And, uh, but for the most part, they've remained unchanged over that period of time. It's important to note that these rules uh, apply to not only the interior pest control in the schools by the uh, general pest control company that checks for cockroaches and, and ants and bees and things of that nature, but it applies to all pesticides used at schools or child cares. And that includes uh, weed control, turf control on athletic fields, places where anywhere that's managed um, or controlled by the school or the child care. And so I won't get into the details too much on uh, those types of applications uh, other than to say that the rules are applicable to those types of applications and the documentation um, that goes with the general pest control um, it is also the same type of documentation that must go with outdoor applications. So the integrated pest management file that's kept at the school's office uh, must contain all documents regarding uh, pest control at the school even if it's just for general weed control. So that IPM file or that integrated pest management file is not does not belong to a pest control professional. It belongs to the school and is the central file for all pesticide applications at that school, regardless of whose name uh, may be emblazoned on the front. If it's a, a company that may have the contract for the school, that's not their file. That would be the file for the school and all that information will go in there. One of the primary elements of integrated pest management rules is the sanitation and maintenance report. The sanitation and maintenance report is designed so that the pest control professional will do a routine, uh, preferably twice per year, inspection of the entire outside of the building and the inside of the building and pest prone type areas and look for specific items that may lend themselves to a pest problem uh, down the road or perhaps may have been the culprit or the cause for uh, pest issues in the past. Um, I like to tell people that integrated pest management shifts our minds from looking at pests as a problem and looks at the pest as a symptom of a problem. And so what the sanitation and maintenance report allows us to do is look for the problem that's creating that symptom, which is the pest. So. To, just to review that, what we're going to do in a sanitation and maintenance report is a thorough, uh, more detailed inspection of the building to look for items such as pest harborages, pest entry points, sanitation issues, cultural issues, things of that nature. In our best management practices, we provide an example of a sanitation and maintenance report that some people will 
uh, tend to use this report. There are different um, formats of the reports like this. Some companies prefer to pare down and, and only include the items that are applicable to that building. However you do it, we do require that this report be done at a minimum of once per year and that that report be placed in the school or child care's integrated pest management file. That report must be dated and it must include um, all that information that you discovered during your detailed inspection. If you note that there are problems, you should take that to the school or daycare's administrators and have them sign off on the report to, so that we can prove that they did indeed see the problems that you note. And then if you see that these problems are corrected at a later date, you must indicate on there the date of correction or that these items have been corrected. Again, the sanitation or maintenance report is to be done at a minimum of once per year. This is a common violation to see that this is not done or that it has been done and the form is not dated. If the form is not dated, then we do not know whether or not it falls within that one year time frame. An essential component of the West Virginia IPM rules is pest monitoring. In order to determine whether or not action thresholds have been met prior to doing uh, applying a pesticide, we have to be able to look at the pest surveillance data sheets that are kept in the school or daycare's IPM file and determine whether or not there was indeed a pest problem. So in order to do that, an ongoing monitoring must be done either by the institution itself or by a contracted pest control professional. Now this monitoring uh, must be done using uh, the sticky glue boards, the, the sticky traps, and also through visual evidence. So any evidence of the pest, whether or not it's through visual inspection or on the sticky trap, must be indicated on that pest surveillance data sheet. The pest surveillance data sheets have to be completed at least once per month. All the sticky traps have to be inspected once per month. And the information on the pest surveillance data sheet must include uh, the date that the monitors were checked or that the pests were found. Uh, the numbers and kinds of insects, arthropods, rodents, other types of evidence, um, and that has to be site specific. We're not looking for an aggregate of, you know, 20 roaches found in the kitchen. We need to know specific by the trap or by the location. And so it is very important that you fill out these pest surveillance data sheets completely. Once you've been able to determine that pests meet or exceed the action thresholds, and you have documented this on the pest surveillance data sheets through uh, indicating that these pests were trapped or other visual evidence of the pests that indicate that they have met or exceeded the action thresholds, you may begin pest control. Now in West Virginia we have what we call the four levels of pest control and these are statutory. These statutory levels are level one non-chemical control measures such as sanitation and maintenance. This is falls back to the sanitation and maintenance report again. What types of sanitation and maintenance things can we do to eliminate the pests and the pest harborages and make that part go away so that the pests will go away? That is level one. Level two would be uh, low toxicity pesticides such as baits, gels, uh, the bait gels and the tamper resistant containers and crack and crevices, the dust, the insect growth regulators, things like that that are not in liquid format, uh, these would be level two. Level three would be a crack and crevice application of a liquid pesticide, such as with a pressurized sprayer um, or an aerosol can, things like that. These would be considered level three in a crack and crevice application or a spot treatment. A spot treatment um, would be a, an area no more than 20% of a total area, no more than uh, two square feet, and the Level four would be a broadcast application that en en encompasses an entire area such as a baseboard application or maybe even on a turf ball field setting where you're doing a granular application with a spreader. That would be a level four. Now, if feasible, you have to go through these levels in order. Now, for instance, on a ball field where you're controlling for crabgrass or something like that, there are no level two applications you can do, but you can advance to that level four. Uh, without doing those lower levels. Now, for item, for things such as cockroaches or ants, you cannot skip to a higher level just because you think the population of the insect is is 
uh, warrants that larger application. There's no such word as a, uh, what we've heard as a clean out, quote unquote. Um, there is no clean outs in schools or child cares. You must follow the levels in order and show that those lower levels were not affected before you can uh, advance to the higher level. This minimizes the amount of um, exposure of the children to the pesticides and so we do require that you go through these levels in order and we will check that whenever we do these inspections of the IPM file. We want to see that the pests met the action threshold and that they're indicated as such on the pest surveillance data sheet and then we want to make sure that the proper levels were followed in order. Now whenever you do advance to a level 3 or a level 4 application we do require that parents are notified 24 hours in advance uh, of this application. Now this notification is done by the school and so if you are a pest control company or a, uh, a lawn or turf care company or landscaping company or someone who's going to be doing this application you are required to give 48, hour, 48 hours notice to the school or child care so that they will have enough time then to make their notification to parents and employees. In some cases where bees or other pest problems that uh, cause an imminent threat to bodily harm are found, level three liquid applications may occur immediately without parent notification. If this is the situation you find yourself in, you must still at, at a minimum include a label and MSDS and treatment record in the file for the application you did as well as a treatment diagram to show where the treatment occurred and you will also need to indicate on your pest surveillance data sheets where what the pest was and how severe they were. So let's recap basic IPM compliance for West Virginia schools and child cares. First, at each school or child care you must have an integrated pest management file. Inside of that file, we're looking for several things. First, a sanitation management report that's filled out at least once per year, preferably twice per year. A map to show where each monitoring device is located. A pest surveillance data sheet that's completed on a monthly basis. And all that information has to be kept for a minimum of two years. The same goes for the treatment records. Treatment records have to include a record of the treatment, a label and material safety data sheet for the pesticide used and a diagram to show where the treatments occurred. Now this is for uh, outdoor and indoor applications. And lastly, we're looking to make sure that the least hazardous pesticide was used, that you followed the four levels, you only treated in response to a pest population that was documented on the pest surveillance data sheet to meet the action threshold. And that's basically uh, integrated pest management compliance at its most basic form.